Welcome back from me, Tim Cable. Now, this is an excerpt from the Talking Sports Books podcast, which is the longest running sports literature show. You can find it at www.talkingsportsbooks.com or via any streaming platform. Now, if you've been enjoying the uh, recent excerpts from the show with Gary Newborn talking about Brian Clough and Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, we've got a bit more for you coming up here now. So Gary joined me a couple of weeks ago to look back at his 50 years in sports television as told in his new book, which is simply called Newborn. Bloody hell. So in this clip, we're going to go back and talk about one of football's great shows. Back in the days when uh, football just had a bit more humour about it. It is, of course, St. Greasy. Now, I thought Greasy looked like a, a TV natural, like he just rolled in off the street, sat down, and the chemistry flowed. Well, apparently it wasn't quite like that. Here, then, is how St. Greasy came about. Now, you, you got one of the best signings. And I remember this vividly growing up in the in the eighties and, and watching it. Is when Greavesy arrives on ITV. And I remember again seeing in the in the book one of the local news outlets writing, Why have we got to have a Londoner, not a Midlander, on our screens? But he he was one of those, wasn't he, that you rarely come on who just takes to television as as if it is just second nature. There's no trying. I mean, well, you know, a deeper dive than Jack Cousteau. I mean, the quips, St. and Greasy. Yeah. I mean, it was just pure television gold. Actually, I wouldn't want to correct you too much, Tim, but cool. actually, he wasn't very good to start with. What, <laughs> happened, what, what basically happened? Sorry about that. I stuff you You're in the blood. <laughs> sorry about that. No, but what on, happened basically right. was that... that, that um, Michael Grade, now Lord Grade, and John Bromley uh, s- won the snatch of the day of, of match of the day contract, which ironically is still with the BBC, and, and they've just had it extended as we speak. Um, so uh, BBC go to court; they're not happy about it, and the judge rather fudged it by saying, "Right, well, the first year of this new contract, it'll be ITV on a Saturday night and BBC on a Sunday afternoon with Jimmy Hill, and then." vice versa, the following season. So we're, at fairly short notice, suddenly faced with doing Star Soccer, which was the Midlands show, on a Saturday night out the studio with that day's football. Somebody suggested Derek Dugan, who was a great friend of mine, but Derek was a bit verbose, as was to be proved when he went to Yorkshire Television as a presenter, uh, despite advice that I'd given him. Um, and I, I just couldn't think of who I really wanted in this new role. And we're, we're now on Monday, the, the week of the, of the event, on the Saturday. And there's Billy Wright, head of sport, myself, presenter, assistant head of sport, Trevor e, sports editor and producer of the programme, and the overall boss of us, really, Tony Flanagan, the executive producer. And we're, we're arguing about names, and I'm saying, oh, I'm not sure about that. Mm, yeah, maybe. And then Tony Flanagan says, I'm just reading a col- column. He was a northerner. Just reading a column of Jimmy Greaves. Anybody got any view on that? And I said, yeah, I've just seen a documentary about his drinking because he's packed up. You know, he's an alcoholic who doesn't drink um, one day at a time or something. I can't remember the name of the title. But, yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's an interesting guy. Great player. I used to watch him as a schoolboy. What do you think? Well, I can't think of anybody else. And we had a vote, and all four said, we'll go for Greavesy. So Trevor East rings Greaves. He says, uh, I live in deep as Essex. Uh, to be honest, Trev, I don't really fancy it. So <laughs> back to the switchboard. So we're now in Birmingham. We're desperate. And Thursday, I'm sitting there. So is there any point having another meeting, Trev? I mean, what are we going to do? And then suddenly, by coincidence, his phone goes, Hello, Trev, it's uh, Jimmy Greaves here. My old lady, Irene, says, I've got to take the job. Am I too late? And Trev says, no, but you've got to be here tomorrow, Friday, to be on the local news programme with Gary to promote it. So he comes on, signs the contract, comes on. He's as nervous as hell, obviously. And the first few shows, he's okay, but I'm trying to teach him the ropes, and Trevor and I are chatting to him, chatting him through it, and and he's getting through. And the local paper writes an editorial, why have we got 
a uh, a Londoner, a Cockney doing it. We well, wasn't Cockneys from Essex, but a Londoner doing it. Uh, the, the 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 viewers are going potty. There's letters coming in, and then about four programmes in, it all changes because Greavesy is watching Birmingham against Blackpool, and Blackpool's Alan Ainsco gets a penalty, and Greavesy says, "Gal." This is an even deeper dive than Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> anyway, the second match, I will never forget it. Manchester City against Coventry. Coventry got this flying winger called Tommy Hutchison. He goes one way past Willie, Madonna, Madonna, Willie Donachy, the uh, fullback for Man City, then the other way, then beats him twice before he crosses the ball. And Greavesy says... They had to unravel Willie in the dressing room afterwards and tell him where he'd been, gal. You know, and I start <laughs> laughing. I never heard of anybody. I mean, people have credited me with spotting a guy who's got great humour. I, I got fed up explaining I didn't know. So now when people still say it, I take the credit because I think, well, there's no point in explaining I didn't know. Um, but then there, we were 15 companies at war, really, and London were didn't treat us very well on a sports level. And they picked, they were picking the World Cup team and they didn't want to know. I was picked for the 82 World Cup in Spain, but they wouldn't pick Jeff Farmer who joined me. He was a brilliant journalist. They wouldn't pick Jimmy Greaves. So Trevor East and I went down to see John Bromley and said, look, you've got to have Greaves. One of your blokes has said he's a disaster in the Midlands and they've never even seen him. He's rocking the audiences here. The ELO take... Uh, a recording set with them and between recording songs in Munich, they're playing, they're playing star soccer to laugh at Greavesy because he's making them all laugh. <laughs> I said, the whole Midlands is falling in love with this bloke on television because he's so funny. He's so personable. You've got to use him. So Bromley said, okay, lads, I'll take your word. So they signed him and he became a massive hit at the 82. You know, Tardelli is such a dirty player for Italy. He's responsible, said Greasy, for more scar tissue than the surgeons at Harfield Hospital and things like that. I mean, you know, it's line after line. So then Bob, nothing to do with me, but Bob Patience, who was a, a producer at London Weekend, came up with this idea of Saint and Greasy, which was brilliant. And Saint and Greasy and St. John and Jimmy Grease became a must-watch program on Saturdays. It was so funny, so brilliant. I mean, they even got Donald Trump on the show at Trump uh, Trump Plaza, you know, drawing yeah, yeah. the League Cup and Greasy taking the piss out of him by present. I I'm now going to present you, Donald, with something very rare, a Saint and Greasy <laughs> coffee mug. <laughs> you know, and he doesn't know what's going on, Trump. He draws leads against Manchester United and Greasy says, oh, Donald, you don't know what you've done. Yeah. And, I mean, the guy was just unbelievable and very funny. Um, and that's how it all happened. And, and, I had 18 years with him. How funny was that? Gary Newborn recounting the legendary duo of Saint and Greavesy. And if you enjoyed that, the full edition of the show, which is stuffed with incredible anecdotes, is out now. It's available wherever you listen to your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, and all of the rest, as well as the website, www.talkingsportsbooks.com. And there are 50 previous editions talking to authors and personalities about their books and lives. Uh, that is it then for me for the moment. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Until next time, from me, Tim Capel, bye-bye for now.